Let's bring in Seema Gupta, observing all matters for us uh, on Italy and beyond. Seema, great to see you. Um, this is, uh, it seems like a, a very dire situation for Mario Draghi. The economic uh, plan uh, not supported by his coalition partners. What's your take on the situation right now? Well, it's clearly been a very dramatic day, full of backs and forths uh, on all sides. I mean, first off, as you mentioned, the Five Star Movement making that decision not to vote uh, in that uh, cost of living bill. Uh, that said, though, the bill eventually did get passed. Um, they got that 172 votes to push it across the line, as well as the confidence motion linked to it. But Mr. Draghi himself saying very clearly, and there has been tensions between him and the Five star movement in recent weeks and he said he didn't feel he had the majority that was necessary as part of the national unity government that he took on back in February 2021. And so with a fractured coalition, he decided to hand in his resignation. And then you have Mattarella, Sergio Mattarella, the president of Italy, saying, no, I reject your resignation. Instead, go back to parliament and see if you have support, a parliamentary majority in order to move forward. And what we understand is that Mario Draghi uh, is expected to speak to parliament, address Parliament next week on Wednesday. And so we'll have some kind of idea of how he goes forward. If Draghi can't get that support, uh, many from the Five Star Movement, it's important to mention, many from the Five Star Movement have actually uh, defected from that party and have moved on to set up their own parties or have moved on into other areas. So maybe he can get that support. But if he doesn't, uh, Sergio Mattarella may have to look for an alternative technocrat figure or he may have no choice but to dissolve parliament and call for fresh elections, something which no one wants in a situation where Italy has a series of problems and issues that they're dealing with. And Seema, that, that's interesting because Mario Draghi, of course, was, br was brought in as the solution to the, the problems that we've seen before. And you've reported on in great detail for us. I'm grateful for that. Um, is there an issue, perhaps, between Conte and Draghi, a personal thing? Well, let's not forget, it was Prime Minister Conte at the time who was removed when a partner within the coalition government decided to pull its support because they didn't want the Five Star Movement in there. And as such, Prime Minister Conte was forced to resign. And at that point, back in February 2021, uh, Sergio Mattarella called in Mario Draghi, the former head of the European Central Bank, uh, a man who's been dubbed Super Mario, who's used language like whatever it takes to save the euro. And there was a hope whatever it takes to save Italy at the time, dealing with the pandemic, dealing with the economic crisis. But, you know, the problems are a little bit different now, but they're still there. The economic crisis as a result of inflation, the energy crisis in the country, uh, Europe at war, the war in Ukraine, and inflation, of course. So these are several issues. And let's not forget, forget the pandemic as well and vaccination that are supposed to start once again. So it's a lot of issues that the country is dealing with. And that's probably why Mattarella has decided to reject this, hoping for stability, because that's really what the country needs now. Lots of parliamentarians today are talking about the irresponsible behaviour they felt of the Five Star Movement in making this decision, hoping that, of course, within the next five days, perhaps this situation can be saved. This uh, parliament situation is supposed to expire by the spring of 2023. Uh, and so there is a, still a few more months to go. Uh, the hope is that they will reach an election in the spring instead of autumn, something that Italy has never had in the past, because that's the other issue. In the autumn is when the budget gets passed. And so that's going to be hard if there's going to be elections in the autumn. It could be as early as late September or in October, but we'll have to see what happens in the next couple of days. And, of course, at that address uh, that Mr Draghi will be making to Parliament on Wednesday. From afar, Seema, it's fascinating to hear this explanation about what's going on. And your knowledge is, is, is supreme. And we thank you for that. I'm wondering about sort of coming down the scale a little bit now to the, the everyday life of ordinary Italians. How, how are they suffering? How are they coping? Because I imagine the whole sort of issue here is that the cost of living crisis is, is biting hard in Italy. Yes, it's very much on their minds, the cost of living, how it's impacting businesses, uh, business owners concerned that with these soaring prices, are their businesses even going to survive? So really, at this point in time, when they're dealing with so many issues, let's not forget the war in Ukraine as well. They're 
having to face so many issues, a lot of Italians, very frustrated, they see this as a very irresponsible move. The country needs stability. We're right in the middle of the summer. Let's not forget, Italy is also dealing with the problem of drought. Uh, farmers struggling with the fact that there isn't enough rains. Uh, that uh, That is another uh, struggling issue for regular Italians. So this is really the last thing they need. Another round of elections, more instability. Uh, many are going to be hoping that Mr. Draghi will remain. Uh, he is seen as a figure of stability, but that all remains to be seen as the different parties are out to make sure they will get the best situation for themselves. The Five Star Movement, as well as the other centre-right and far-right parties, and you have the centre-left parties on the other end as well. Seema Gupta. In Italy, thank you for that uh, context and explanation about the situation. And, of course, we're watching for all developments. Thank you very much indeed. Great to see you. Seema Gupta, our correspondent uh, based in Rome.